Hello everyone, my name is George. Welcome back to Company Founding 101 Class 12. Since last time, we went over VC and angel investment. Today, we're going to go over due diligence and validation. In the definition of due diligence is this. So in the context of venture capital, is assessment by potential investors before, you know, seeing a deal. It serves to validate the investment opportunity to see if there's any risk that you have not mentioned and the health of your business and stuff like that in financial, legal, operation, and commercial contexts. So the well-conducted due diligence process safeguards from for both the investor and company from unforeseen complications down the line. And the importance of such cannot be overstated. It forms the foundation and trust between investment and the company. And it makes investors to make informed decisions. Due diligence uncovers potential risks and red flags that they may not be apparent on the surface. It also assesses the compatibility and potential synergies between the investor and the investee. So it will ensure that it's going to be mutually beneficial and align with the strategic vision for both parties. So the due diligence process is as follows. The first is the preparation stage. So it involves organization of all requisite documents and information to ensure everything is ready for review. The investigation is then the heart of the process, involving through checks and assessments across multiple dimensions of business, like mentioned before, like commercial, legal, financial, da da da. The final stage report encapsulates the findings, which highlights any potential issues and provides recommendation that guides investment decisions. So the key areas of due diligence is as follows. The management team is evaluated for experience, track record, and co uh, competencies. So I want to bring an example of Domino's. So if you want to join in Domino's, you, I'm pretty sure I read this somewhere that you have to have three years of experience, successful running experience of a piece of business. The financial performance assessments includes a deep dive into revenues, profitability, and cash flows. Those we have went over in previous lessons, what those are. Market position examines the competitive landscape, customer base, and market share. While well, legal compliance ensures adherence to relevant regulations, scrutinizes contracts and checks for any ongoing litigations. So what's the definition of valuation? So valuation is the process of quantifying a company's worth. So for a start startup or ongoing company, this process is pivotal when fundraising, planning on exit strategies, or making key strategic decisions. Because, for example, if, if the valuation is good or bad, it, it can go very different ways. Because if you have a good valuation, then you might be able to attract more funding does the investor ask more from you when planning their access strategies? The fi final valuation figure is influenced by a combination of factors, including the market condition, like how is your the whole market condition is going, your financial performance of your own company, and future growth prospects. So this can I add uh, acts as a guidance for which market you should pick and go into. So there are a couple widely recognized valuation methods. The first one is called the, compar uh, the Comparable Companies Analysis, which compares the company with similar public traded companies. Which that brings is that if you have two, two companies in the same area with similar services, you can evaluate the PE ratio and be like, oh, that's going to be your PE ratio as well. The DCF, discount, uh, Discounted Cash Flow Method, calculates the present value of the future cash flows, which takes into consideration of the time value of the uh, money. And lastly, the president transactions method reviews prices paid in similar past transactions. While the VC method estimates future returns for the investors. 
you might ask, these are so many validation methods. Which one is the best one to choose? So it depends on the company's uh, developmental stage, the quality and quantity of available data, and industry norms. Early stage startups often resort to the venture, uh, venture capital method or comparable companies analysis because VCs want to know how much they can get back. While more mature companies uses the uh, VCF for precedented transactions due to the availability for more, more robust data. So you want to evaluate company financials. So the key to validation is a, th a thorough evaluation of a company's financials. And this I have went over the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statements. It provides insight to your financial health. I went over what's healthy, what's not. And they pay key um, attention to um, factors such as revenue growth, growth margin, burn rate, and uh, EBITDA. And for future projections based on these metrics, provides a glimpse into what's your potential growth and profitability. So investors look for ventures that show really strong growth because they want high return. Sometimes they even want like 10 times or more return as a VC and scalabilities. And they also are looking for a profitable business model. So as an entrepreneur, you should be prepared to defend your financial assumptions, business model at the stake. And you have to be honest, transparent, and you have to be willing to accept feedbacks that are critical that investors trust and foster productive relations. Because if you are not honest, no one's going to invest in you when they find out you're lying. They'll retreat their funding immediately. So how to prepare for the due diligence and valuation? So it involves organization and the knowledge. So you have to keep all the documents, the uh, uh, records of document organized and make them really easy to access to make the due diligence process smoother. And by understanding your three balance sheet, cash flow statement, income statement is essential to rationalize your valuation. And entrepreneurs should be equipped to justify their business valuation confidently and logically. So you just can't just randomly put a number there. So what are some impacts? So this will definitely have an impact on the deal's final terms because the equity debt or hybrid things can be really complicated and due diligence serves as a good, as a good indicator for that and the pricing of the deal as well and the rights offered by the investors, such as control rights, information rights, and access rights, is also offered because of your due diligence, how healthy it is. And what are some common mistakes and how do you avoid them, you might ask. So it's mainly come from lack of preparation. So unrealistic valuations, because sometimes you think your company is valued at, I don't know, like $100 million, but it's only at, at like you know $50,000. And you can't avoid these by, you know, have a more logical and organized approach and make more realistic and defendable assumptions. So you can gain a more kind of precise understanding of value and in their specific industry. So believe you can be successful and thank you so much for listening. See you next class.